Hey, I watched 201 movies in 2023. Here's a mini review of numbers 101 to 201. The first 100 are in this video here. Okay, let's go. Eternals was terrible. I only watched it for my MCU tier list video. I genuinely could not tell you a plot point or the name of a single character from this film. In the Loop was alright. There were some funny moments and some good writing, but overall it was a bit forgettable. I love Peter Capaldi though. Star Wars is Star Wars. I spoke about it in the first half of this video, and I have an entire video essay dedicated to it. It's fantastic. Like I said in the first video, Empire Strikes Back is somehow even better than the original. Too many people hate on Temple of Doom. It's the second best Indiana Jones movie. Obviously it's not quite as good as Raiders, but I love the setting and the visual effects. I wish the franchise explored this darker angle a bit more instead of this. Creep was a decent horror film. There were a few scenes with genuinely good tension building, and the main antagonist was pretty creepy, but it didn't leave a lasting impression on me. I actually really liked Nimona. I love the current trend in the animation industry of studios moving towards more stylized 3D animation rather than trying to look lifelike after the success of the Spider-Verse movies. This film was gorgeous, and it explored some really interesting themes of identity. Birdman was so interesting. I loved the themes of trying to ignore the highs of your former self and instead build something new, different, and better. Michael Keaton was fantastic, and some of the cinematography was really well executed. Honestly, I think The Revenant is really overrated. Some of it was shot really well, but the narrative was incredibly dull and Leonardo DiCaprio didn't get a chance to shine. He's a fantastic actor, but I don't think he got the chance to showcase that here. The Big Short was an interesting story, and it had some critical moments. I liked watching it, but I haven't thought about it much since. There was no reason for this to be made. I sat in the cinema with my family watching it, and I think there was about five minutes of the film that I enjoyed. At one point, a character said, some things should stay buried. Do you think they realised the irony in that line? I saw Into the Spider-Verse get added to Netflix, and I pressed play instantly. This is my third favourite film of all time, and until its sequel came out, it had the nicest art style and animation I'd ever seen. This film holds up just as well today, even if Across the Spider-Verse is somehow a thousand times better. Barbie was genuinely incredible. I did do an entire video speaking about this film and Oppenheimer, but I still want to dedicate a bit of time to it here. Barbie's message is one of great importance. It highlights the inequalities in our society on every side of the gender divide. Barbie showcases the struggles that women in our world have to face every day in all aspects of life, while simultaneously appreciating the issues that men struggle with relating to mental health and feeling like they're not enough. Okay, hear me out. Oppenheimer is a brilliantly made film, but I've really struggled to watch it. I struggle to recognise the faces of people I've only seen one or two times, which makes some of the narrative really hard to understand because characters would show up once at the 30 minute mark and then return at the 2 hour 30 minute mark. Because of this, I couldn't really keep track of who thought what and who liked who and who was on what side of each debate. Like I said, this wasn't the film's fault. Oppenheimer was brilliantly shot and the acting was some of the best I've ever seen, it just wasn't for me. I did not expect the trial of the Chicago 7 to be this good. Every performance was fantastic, especially from Sacha Baron Cohen. Obviously, the message of the film is incredibly important, and I found the story so interesting. I love courtroom dramas, so this one ticked a lot of boxes for me. I watched Moonrise Kingdom at the same outdoor cinema I saw Forrest Gump at, and it's one of my best summer memories. Me and my boys were just laying down on some beanbags in the evening with like 200 strangers watching a Wes Anderson film, and it was great. Even if Josh got four burgers from McDonald's and didn't give me one. Honestly, a large chunk of my rating for this film comes from the memory of the evening, but it genuinely is a really well-made movie. It's a Wes Anderson movie, so obviously it looks stunning, and the plot was really sweet, but... There were some odd scenes that really reminded me of the petition Wes signed. That one. Okay, I know Genius isn't a movie, but I watched four and a half hours of it, so I want to talk about it. Kanye is a troubled individual. We all know that. And obviously, I don't agree with or endorse any of the terrible things that he says. But I adore his music and learning about his creative process. Genius isn't a trilogy documenting the endless drama around Kanye, but is instead a character study that provides insight into how the musician views himself and the art he makes. And it is incredible at doing that. Seeing Kanye's creative process as he overcame every struggle the world threw at him was unbelievably inspiring. I still frequently think about the moment when Kanye was sitting in the dentist's office with wires holding his mouth open while his dentist inspected his teeth when he started humming the melody to Through the Wire. I don't think I've ever seen a better representation of overcoming adversity to make something beautiful. It's a fantastic documentary, but even after spending years of his life with him, Cootie still can't pronounce Kanye's name correctly. I really like the show People Just Do Nothing, but I felt like the jokes had run kinda dry by the time the film came around. To be honest, this was a bit of a slog to get through. There were a few funny moments, but it was nowhere near as good as the series. 
Civil War is one of my favourite MCU movies, so I wanted to watch it for nostalgia's sake, and I was genuinely surprised by how well it held up. Maybe this is just my inner nine-year-old talking, but I had a lot of fun watching it. Yeah, there's a big overuse of green screens, and some of the action is a bit meh, but it's an entertaining way to spend two and a half hours. I rewatched Guardians 3 the day it got added to Disney+, Plus, and it was just as good the second time round. This is my favourite MCU movie, and it's not close. Again, Infinity War is mainly this good from nostalgia, but I do think it's a really satisfying first part of the conclusion to the Infinity Saga. Endgame is a disappointment, but that's a conversation for another time. Mutant Mayhem was sick. I've never been a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles guy, but this film was great. The turtles felt like genuine teenagers and had really good chemistry. I adored the art style and the animation was so nice. Mr. Beast showed up at one point, which was weird but kind of cool I guess. The Squid and the Whale was decent. I'm usually a fan of Noah Baumbach's directing style, but this one just didn't really do it for me because I couldn't relate to most of the emotional beats. I loved Human Traffic. I think the best way to describe it is a more fun version of Trainspotting. Some of the characters in this film are so lovable, and I still quote a couple of them most days. We Need to Talk About Kevin was a disgusting film, and I really enjoyed it. It wasn't quite as effective at making me feel uncomfortable as other films such as The Killing of a Sacred Deer, but the brilliant performances by Ezra Miller and Tilda Swinton made it an entertaining watch. Marriage Story is brilliant. There's so much emotion in every line delivered by Scarlett Johansson and Adam Driver, they're both just incredible. The narrative of this film is heartbreaking, and it's supported by strong, interesting characters that I still wanted to see more of after the credits started rolling. I watched this while I was going through my yearly Pokemon hyperfixation, and I enjoyed it a lot. It's not the highest quality, but it's Pokemon. Of course I'm gonna like it. I was a bit disappointed by this one. Normally, Ghibli movies tie me emotionally to the characters and get me invested in the plot, but the cat returns didn't really do that. I enjoyed my time watching it, but it's nowhere near as good as most of the rest of the studio's filmography. The Wind Rises was a gorgeous film. This is exactly what I meant just now when I said Ghibli films make me care about the plot and characters. It's obvious that Miyazaki strongly relates to his protagonist, as we're able to constantly draw parallels between the pair's struggles. The idea of a struggling artist slash inventor is so interesting to me, and as always, Miyazaki delivers his narrative beautifully with jaw-dropping animation, a gorgeous art style, and emotional voice acting. Spider-Man Lotus was atrocious, like downright dog shit. This film does not have a single redeeming quality. I genuinely feel bad for the few people that worked on this that weren't in the group of horrible racist people that got exposed on Twitter. There's one part of this film where Spider-Man trauma dumps on a kid with terminal cancer and tells him he shouldn't look up to him because he let Gwen Stacy die, like, what? I thought they cloned Tyrone was hilarious. The script was witty and it was delivered masterfully by John Boyega, Jamie Foxx and Tayona Paris. This film weaved important social commentary inside some hilarious scenes. I strongly recommend it. I watched the first half of The Founder in a business studies lesson about a year and a half ago, and I quite enjoyed it. I decided to watch it from the beginning when I saw that it got added to Netflix. Whilst it wasn't quite as good as I remembered, I think it's still a decent film. Michael Keaton is Michael Keaton, he's hardly going to give a bad performance. The story was interesting, and Keaton was supported well by pretty much everyone else in the film. Split really wasn't as good as I was expecting. James McAvoy is a fantastic actor, and his performance here is awe-inspiring, but the plot's just a bit shit. I also hate it when films are like, this guy's a psychopath kidnapper because he has a psychiatric disorder, like, shut up, man. Also, what the f*** was that MCU Bruce Willis cameo at the end? I genuinely quite like the Hunger Games franchise. Yeah, the story and dialogue are a bit cheesy and cringy, but I enjoy seeing the costumes and set pieces throughout all five films. The first act of White Noise was incredible, then the quality just plummeted. Adam Driver and Greta Gerwig were fantastic throughout, but everything after the family left their house to escape the storm was just meh. All the Hunger Games movies are the same in my mind, so I mainly feel the same way about this one as I do the first. I absolutely adore The Gentleman. Guy Ritchie is fantastic at making iconic characters through memorable, quotable dialogue. I catch myself doing impressions of every character from this film way too often. Like Snatch and the Gentleman, Lockstock has interesting characters and memorable dialogue, but it doesn't reach the same levels as those two. This was Richie's first feature, so it's natural that it's not quite as good as his other two hits. 30 Minutes or Less was atrocious, for me at least. The humour in this film is my least favourite type of comedy, it was a genuine struggle to get through. Django Unchained is my fourth favourite Tarantino movie, and it's still a 9 out of 10. This film has the holy trinity of Jamie Foxx, Christoph Waltz, and Leonardo DiCaprio performing its most important roles, and oh my god, they're all incredible. The narrative is interesting, the cinematography is gorgeous, and I just love Tarantino's style. The Breakfast Club is a really warm and cosy film. I love seeing these characters slowly become more comfortable around each other. There are so many great scenes, like the dance sequence or the part where all the kids are running around the school. The only part I don't like is when Claire gives Alison a makeover. Easy A isn't anything special, it's just meant to be a bit of fun. I kind of enjoyed it, but I got a bit bored towards the end. 
Two distant strangers had a really cool idea of using a Groundhog Day type narrative to show that racism is a constant in our society and that we need to break the cycle we're currently in. Unfortunately, the acting, writing and characterisation is really weak. Like I said, this film had a good idea, it was just executed very poorly. Pulp Fiction is Pulp Fiction. This is the best movie Tarantino has made by far. Every character stands out thanks to the immaculate writing and characterisation, which is a joint effort between Tarantino and his actors. Every scene in this film is memorable due to the interesting conversations between each character and the actions they take is just fantastic. Good Morning Vietnam was really enjoyable. As always, Robin Williams was a joy to watch. He kills his role, which is made even more impressive when you consider a lot of his on-air dialogue was improvised. The whole romantic relationship in this film was a bit odd, but overall I really liked it. I love 500 Days of Summer. The relationship between Tom and Summer is so complicated which makes this a really compelling watch. Both Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Zoe Deschanel deliver every line perfectly, and I love Mark Webb's stylistic choices, like simultaneously showing Tom's expectations for Summer's party and what actually happened. The blackening was quite funny, it had some nice satirical moments of political commentary but ultimately it was quite forgettable. Stay On Board is an incredible documentary. I'm really interested in skateboarding, which made me press play on this, but Leo Baker's story kept me engaged and interested throughout. The story this documentary told went from heartbreaking to heartwarming, which gave it a really satisfying ending. I loved it. I'd watched Casino Royale a long time ago, but I didn't remember anything apart from Daniel Craig getting a ball of rope swung into his balls. Ignoring what that says about me, I decided to rewatch it, but I found it really dull. To me, James Bond is an extremely bland, two-dimensional character which just makes his movies really boring. This film also didn't know how to end, which made it a slog to watch. Basketball is my favourite sport, so I watched the Redeem team to get my fix before the season started. I enjoyed this while watching it, but I can hardly remember the story now, so clearly the documentary didn't do enough to be memorable. I really liked Hustle. I'm thoroughly enjoying the Adam Sandler rebirth where he started playing more serious roles, even if I didn't really like Uncut Gems. Obviously, my enjoyment of this film came partially from my love for basketball, but I still think it's solid. CB4 was actually hilarious. It's such a good parody. I don't think there was a scene in here where I didn't laugh. This version of The Suicide Squad is infinitely better than the 2016 version. James Gunn's style works perfectly with these types of characters, and I'm excited to see his takeover of the DCEU. I liked Straight Outta Compton, but this was probably mainly because I love the music surrounding the story. Jason Mitchell was fantastic as Eazy, -E. his performance in the hospital scene was heartbreaking. The Hangover just isn't my type of humour. I can see why people like it, it's just not for me. Paris, Texas was a really interesting film. The ideas of isolation worked so well here, largely due to the beautiful cinematography. I adore the scenes where Travis is walking on the opposite side of the road to his son, and when he's listening to James through the screen. The green and red lighting throughout the film to highlight the mood of each scene is masterful. If you thought Paris, Texas was good, just wait until you watch Space Jam. Honestly, I enjoyed this way more than I want to admit, and I didn't expect a Pulp Fiction reference in the middle of the final game. I was really excited to watch this, so I was a bit disappointed when I didn't enjoy it much. I thought Daniel Kalia was excellent as always, but nothing else about the film really stood out to me. 8 Mile was kinda cool. Eminem is a much better act than I expected, but I still only really cared about the battle scenes. I thoroughly enjoyed School Days. Spike Lee's style of comedy and filmmaking works so well here. Giancarlo Esposito and Spike himself were fantastic in their respective roles, and I loved the random musical number. Do the Right Thing is incredible. This narrative is so memorable and heartbreaking. Almost every character is racist to at least one other group at some point during the film, and this is shown brilliantly in the scene where characters shout derogatory terms directly at the camera. This idea that almost every character is in the wrong at some point in the film makes the final conflict so much more interesting. Spike Lee just knows how to make an audience invested in his stories and characters. I already spoke about this, it's just here because I watched it twice. My friend let me borrow a DVD of Children of Men, and he was severely disappointed when he didn't see a 5 star review on Letterboxd. I did enjoy the film though, particularly the scene in which the protagonist is carrying the newborn baby out of the war-torn building as every person around him stops to look at it. I found Seven Psychopaths quite draining, to be honest. The humour just didn't work for me, and I didn't care about the plot or characters at all. I really liked The Creator. I think there's an argument that sci-fi is a dying genre as there's no longer any wonder related to seeing massive new worlds or otherworldly technology because we know we can just make it with computers. I say all this because I think it makes a good sci-fi film such as The Creator all the more impressive. I saw this in the cinema, which definitely added to the spectacle. I think it was solid all round, but not necessarily outstanding. The Peanut Butter Falcon is a sweet, heartwarming movie with lovable characters. You should definitely watch it if you haven't already. The Nice Guys was a solid bit of fun. I don't think it was anything special, but I enjoyed it. I loved An Unexpected Journey. I watched it once when I was like five and didn't like it, but this time I didn't want it to end. Middle Earth is such an interesting world, and this film is masterfully made. 
I didn't enjoy Desolation of Smell quite as much as An Unexpected Journey because it didn't feel like as much of an adventure, which is what I loved about the first film. I didn't enjoy Battle of the Five Armies very much. It was just a two and a half hour battle scene and that just didn't do it for me. I tried doing a Lord of the Rings marathons with my friends and they literally did not stop talking the entire film so we gave up. The three lines of dialogue I heard were good though. Five Nights at Freddy's is not a very good film, but I had so much fun watching it just because of what it is and the people I went to see it with. Yeah, they could have made an actually good horror movie out of this IP, but I did enjoy most of the corny scenes and the references to different parts of the fandom. I thought every character in Bottoms was interesting and engaging, which made it a really enjoyable film. The themes that it tackled are important, and I think every actor was great. The movie was really funny, and I loved some of the stylistic choices. I was forced to watch this for college. Again, it's just not my humour. I spoke about Snatch in the last video, so I'll just say I love it for the same reasons I love The Gentleman. Everyone knows it by now, but Parasite is a masterpiece. This film is beautifully written, directed, and acted, and its commentary on the class and wealth divide in South Korea is so interesting. The cinematography was also gorgeous. I love the way the film played with lighting to create the shot of the guy in the basement coming up to the main house. I love everything about this film. It's amazing. I've heard a lot of people rave about After Sun, and whilst I don't think it's quite as good as everyone says it is, I did still enjoy it. I think because I had heard so much about it, I was kind of waiting for something big to happen rather than just enjoying the story that was being told. This isn't the film's fault, but it definitely impacted my enjoyment of it. Goodfellas is an incredible story of rags to riches to rags again. Ray Liotta does an incredible job of portraying the decline in Henry Hill's mental health and sanity as he becomes a gangster, and he's supported brilliantly by Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci. I'm not the biggest Scorsese guy, but I love this film. The Babadook was atrocious. I hate the whole the real monstrous grief aspect, and I spent the whole film praying for the little shitbag kid to get ripped apart by the Babadook. I love the sense of humour in the Monty Python films, and I think Holy Grail is the peak of that humour. This film is witty and inventive, somehow being incredibly smart and incredibly stupid at the same time. I spoke about Life of Brian in the last video, but I love it for the same reasons as Holy Grail. I just don't think it's quite as good. Bora is an incredibly inventive and important film. Many people criticise the character for portraying racial stereotypes, but those people fail to understand that everything Sasha Barrow Cohen does as this character is done with the intent to expose the truly evil people he's talking to. The rare times that Cohen meets a genuinely nice person as Borat, he treats them with respect and showcases their kindness. This film is genius. I spoke about this in the last video, but Jackass is great. 10 Things I Hate About You is a decent rom-com. I only watched it because of Heath Ledger, and he was pretty good, but the film was about as corny as you'd expect. Four Lines was simultaneously hilarious and heartbreaking. This film uses satirical comedy to show its political commentary and most of the time it works really well. I did find it a bit slow though, which is a problem when the runtime is only 90 minutes. I thought this documentary was fantastic, especially when considering it was made for YouTube. Boogie has such an interesting story because he's such a repulsive man. Somehow, this documentary made me feel upset about someone's situation without having any sympathy for them at all. I think Raiders is the best Indiana Jones film. It's great. Everyone knows Spielberg's one of the best directors of all time, and he showcases that here. The set pieces are the real standout of the Indiana Jones franchise. They make for so much interesting action, and they're definitely not missing here. Napoleon was really bad. My experience watching it got off to a bad start when a woman shouted at me and my friends for talking during the trailers. No, not even the trailers, the adverts before the trailers. This film spent so much time on the boring parts of Napoleon's life and skipped over the interesting parts. It was just so dull and I really felt the runtime. Castle in the Sky is the first Ghibli film I ever watched, so I wanted to revisit it. I didn't love it quite as much this time round, but the animation, story, voice acting, art style and music are all stellar. Okay, as a film, this Space Jam is worse than the first, but I enjoyed it more because of my glorious king, the Goat LeBron. Ex Machina was really interesting. I enjoyed its commentary on art, technology, and misogyny. The film was also visually stunning, and each actor was fantastic. I enjoyed the ballad of Songbirds and Snakes more than I thought I would. Like with the original Hunger Games movies, I really enjoyed the set pieces and costumes. I thought the singing was a little cringe, but Tom Blythe killed it as snow. I rewatched this because I was going through something, don't judge me. The Fundamentals of Caring was a really sweet and heartwarming film. Paul Rudd and Craig Roberts were a compelling double act that made for some great moments. The Nightmare Before Christmas is really unique. I love stop motion animation, so I'm always going to enjoy it. I'm not the biggest fan of Christmas movies, but this one always gets me in the festive mood. Regular Show is one of my favourite shows of all time. The movie isn't quite as good as the show, but it's still hilarious. Okay, Saltburn has been talked about to death, but this is my only opportunity to speak about it, so bear with me and let me say my piece. First of all, every actor absolutely kills their role, especially Barracuda. 
He's just a weird little goblin guy in every movie, and I love him for that. The cinematography was gorgeous, and the narrative was spectacular. I do think everyone kind of overreacted to a lot of the scenes. Like, yeah, they're weird, but everyone I heard talking about it was acting as if they were these abhorrent, life-changing things. Still, I can't find a single flaw in this film. I know this is a weird thing to watch on Boxing Day, but my grandma put it on and I'd feel bad if I didn't watch it. This film could have been 10 minutes long. Every joke was stretched out 5 times longer than it should have been, which made it drag massively. I spoke about Fantastic Mr. Fox in the last video, but I love both Anderson, I love animation, and I love this film. Like I said earlier, Pulp Fiction is one of my favourite films, so me and my girlfriend rewatched it. I saw Godzilla Minus One at the Prince Charles, and it was one of my favourite cinema experiences. This film instantly hooks you into its story and makes you care about the characters, which sets the stakes so much higher than most other kaiju films. I love that, despite clearly being CGI, Godzilla still kind of looks like a practical suit. It's a really nice way of paying respect to the franchise's origins. Godzilla Minus One gets everything right about Godzilla. When I came out of the cinema, I still preferred Shin Godzilla, but I think this is my favourite now. It's fantastic. Thank you all so much for watching. Sorry the second part took a while to come out, I've been working on a few videos at the same time to hopefully be more consistent this year. Tell me about the best films you watched last year in the comments. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed, follow me on Instagram and TikTok, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!